I'm here with the fabulous and flamboyant Phil Dudman. So welcome to the nursery, Phil. Thanks so much, Kath. You're the horticultural... The delectable Kath. Ah, oh, thank you. You're the horticultural editor for Gardening Australia. Mm. You're the um, host and presenter of the ABC Good Gardening on our local radio. You do all the talk shows and um, presentations around the country in gardening. So you really are just the, the go-to man for gardening questions. I'm chief cook. And chief cook. There you go. So, um, but most of all, you're actually a, a gardener. Mm. How did you get into it? How did you fall in love with gardening? Wow, well, that's a bit of a long story. Look, you know, um, looking back, right back to my childhood, um, I did have connections with plants and, uh, you know, things like hibiscus and there was honeysuckle, there were mangoes in the garden, there were the neighbours were growing dahlias and, you know, all these sorts of things. And, you know, I just thought that was a normal thing, but it wasn't until I was much older that I realised, oh, kids weren't really into plants, but I was following them. And I think once I hit my teenage years, yep. I took an interest in native plants, particularly things that were bird attracting and wildlife attracting. And I remember doing a little makeover of the family garden yeah. using these plants, but that was just something to do. So you started with your own little garden then? Well, no, I just sort of took over. Oh, okay, this is <laughs> yeah. my garden now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look, I was a cricketer and I used to mow the cricket pitch out there. So I, was, I took an interest in mowing and I took an interest in putting in, you know, native plants in the garden. And look, this was the late 70s, early 80s, so that was a big deal. It was like very trendy in that, that time. I just sort of got into it, but I didn't really think much of it. And I never, ever for a minute thought of horticulture as a career or even following gardening in any way. Yeah. But uh, I, I studied architecture, uh, I, I worked for an insurance company, I joined a band yeah. and uh, it was while I was in this band in the, uh, in the 80s and uh, hanging out with these guys, the drummer of our band for horticulture. So we moved to Sydney from Brisbane and he was always taking us out to the bush to look at plants and you know I'd just be following him along and just quizzing him constantly and it was amazing his knowledge and I just thought what a wonderful thing to know about the plant world it just felt so right yeah. travelled overseas came back long story but anyway <laughs> got back to Australia I was about 26 years old and I thought what the blooming heck am I going to do now and uh, just came to the horticulture landed in Brisbane studied horticulture, picked up jobs, everything just came together and like I just ate it up. I just wanted it. So wow, it felt so good to finally find your thing. I yeah. tried to move away from it in my <laughs> 30s. That was my first midlife crisis. Came back. And uh, everything I tried to think of just came back to plan. So here I am and still love it. So tell me, Phil, you started with native plants being your passion. Mm. Are they still or would you say that you go towards the more, more of the edible garden? Yeah, look, I'm always interested in, you know, grevilleas, banks, you know, like all these things that bring in the, the bird life. I just love the fact that you can have a garden and have so much bird life coming in. They fly in, they fly out. I've just become a bit of a bird watcher. Yeah. You know, I just love yeah. it. Uh, but, you know, I'm totally passionate about growing food and uh, that is my dedication. Yes. You know, you've got to have a dedication and for me, it's a big one. You know, I never get tired of it. I'm still making loads of mistakes. Uh, things go wrong and, uh, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to do it better. Yeah. But um, it's my thing and uh, I spend a lot of time these days teaching other people in my own garden through workshops and through the stuff I do online, how to be great gardeners and how to grow lots of food because, wow, uh, it's such a dream to be able to step into your backyard and to harvest beautiful fresh vegetables, as you know, <laughs> yeah. with fruits, yeah. and to be able to bring that into the house and to prepare a meal that's predominantly from your garden or even just, you know, Some it's just it. the lettuce yeah. is from your, from your garden. It tastes so good, it feels so good, it's, it's nice that it's free of chemicals and all the rest. It, uh, I never get tired of being out there with the veggie patch and, and, and sowing the seed and watching it right through to harvest and nurturing the plants. It feels right, it feels it like the place you. to be. Yeah. yeah, 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 I think like we've all come from the plant world, yeah. you know, and being amongst plants, particularly stuff you can eat, is the right place to be. So I try to encourage everyone to 
give it a try and start with food because there are plenty of benefits. Well, there you go. So that. start with food, like Phil says, but also remember that uh, planting flowering crops and food for animals is also food. So it's that balance of the garden so you can encompass it. We've got to look after our friends out there yeah. because uh, we're all in this together. That's right. Now, my big question that I like to ask everybody, Phil, do you have a favourite fruit? Do I have a favourite fruit? Well, um, you know, I've got to say, mango is right up there. <laughs> but uh, can I say lychee? Ah, oh, the lychee. Oh, yeah, okay. look, you know, um, if you've had a lychee from a tin, you want to you want to take that you want to erase that out of your mind. That was a horrible I experience. I didn't actually know they came in tins. Oh yeah, but... they do. Yeah, they do come in tins. Forget about that. Erase yeah. that one. If you've had one from the store, not bad. Mm, okay. But if you picked one from the tree <laughs> and cracked it open and eaten it fresh, woohoo! It'll just blow your mind. So beautiful. That's an experience that is just so special. And you know what? It's only recently that I've finally planted. But, uh, oh, I've got okay. great memories of, uh, you know, in Brisbane, every Christmas into January, uh, just finding a, a lychee tree, a bit of a forager on the side, and just <laughs> accidentally filling up on these things, just standing yeah. here like this, just, just delicious. Well, I'm going to have a challenge today because our lychees are finished, we ate all the lychees, but we still have some longans on our tree, which are quite smelly, so... I'm going to see if I can get you to fall in love with the long Oh, I reckon you might be able to twist my arm, Yeah, Kat. to see if you think it's as, as great as the light you Yeah, to see how we go. Yeah. It's going to be a tall, tall <laughs> order, but we'll give it a try. What What would be the the um, the one big tip that you would say to people out there who are sitting on their, at their computer thinking, oh, I'd love to grow a garden. So what's, what's Phil's number one tip for growing those foods? Start small. Start small. Start small. Look, one of the things that really uh, upsets people and turns people off growing food uh, or gardening at all is uh, the, when you things go wrong, mm. you know. And, hey, <laughs> if you had rain. time, uh, we could tell you, like, you know, that's a whole series on things that have gone wrong. Yeah. Um, but that's how you learn. But you don't want too many things to go wrong because if it can become really disheartening. So start with something small. If you just want to grow some ornamentals or a fruit tree or whatever, and you've got a balcony, get a pot. It's an easy way to start. You don't have to dig the ground. You don't have to prepare the soil. You don't have to buy much. A pot, potting mix, grow some herbs in it, grow some lettuces in it, whatever. But look after that thing yes. like it's your little brother or sister. Love it. And, and know that if you look after it, it's going to reward you and learn like oh what's going on okay it's it's wilting or it's not performing and what do living things need fertilizer oh, yeah, i'll give it some fertilizer so it needs a bit of feeding so all those things you can learn and once you learn a little bit of that and become successful and uh experience that joy of harvesting or just watching it flower or you know having something green in your space start building on that and build gradually and eventually you know, you'll have 12 garden beds full of, <laughs> and you'll be growing all your own food and you'll be a master. And you'll be an expert just like That's you. Right. <laughs> Thank you so much. The fantastic, fabulous Phil Dunwood. Thanks, Kath. Lovely to see you. Thank you. My name is Kath Kermode. Thank you for watching this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Please click on the bell to subscribe to our videos so you don't miss any and keep watching here at dailiesfruit.com.au